Stephanie Gogo, aka Steph, is a 23-year-old rapper, singer, and songwriter whose debut EP, Change, reveals different sides of her personality with each song. The EP took five years to make. I like the fact that we're so bright and we're in such a bright place. I like, love it. It makes sense, right? It makes so much sense. Actually, Steph, I'd describe you as a garden salad. Why a garden salad? Because yeah. you're, you're fresh, Okay. more or less green in the game, Ooh. and you're colorful. I mean, look, look, look at all this color. And okay. Okay. you're also full of flavor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh. There's so many sides to you. Thank you. That's the thing. So. Let's just start this salad from the very top and find out, like, where did Steph come from? Steph is from Nairobi. I'm a Nairobi baby. Um, I love the city. Born and raised here for the most part. Done uni in Mauritius. I lived on the island for about five years. Fancy. What was that like? It must have been like, was it all, you know, drinking cocktails, no. chilling? No, 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 no. That's what everyone thinks. And I thought the same until I landed. That's how they got you. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. how they got me there. And I've been around music and art um, in general. I'm a creative in every sense of the word. It shows. I've worked in the fashion industry. It um, shows. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and now music is something that's always been a part of my life growing up. Just my favorite mode of expression. Yeah. And you express it so well. In fact, let's talk about rap influences. I've, I listen to none of them. You said they're doing a board. None of them youths be trapping. If you were spitting like this, yeah. you grew up listening to some hardcore type <laughs> of hip hop. Yeah, it's evident in the music, in the sound. I am greatly influenced, inspired by black British culture and Caribbean mm. culture as well. That's what I grew up with, that's what, what my parents fed me. And a lot of my musical taste comes from my father. Ah. So all of the garage he played, grime, um, even just the r and I was listening to Craig David, I was listening to ah. Seal growing up. So that yes. side of life is what I was accustomed to. I think my, my biggest influences, I'd say, is people like Chip um, from the Chip UK. Mom. Yeah, Chip yeah, Monk. Yeah. I thought that he's cool. He's great. Mm. Chip, Little Kano, Bizzle. Little Bizzle, oh. you know, like, yeah, just the whole black British, you know, UK rap squad. I think it's so yeah. wild that, that your dad was playing that music, like my dad was playing. Roombas oh, and lingalas. Yeah. That's what you. Are, that's what's playing on the house when you get home. Yeah, that's that. My, the rumba was more of like my mom. She's a very like lingala type person. But I just I never gravitated that way for some reason. I don't know why. But yeah, I'm also just a daddy's girl. So yeah, I spent most of my time with him. So yeah, we love a daddy's girl, mm. and that's what's up. <laughs> and so, you're young, mm. okay, mm. Uh, and been in fashion dabbling in the music yes. and even just from how you dress i can tell that you're the sort of person who are you big on experimentation uh, is that a thing super 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 i feel like i don't know i it's just the gemini in me i shall say like oh, there's so gemini. many faces there's so many different personalities mm. people are always meeting different versions of steph so i think experimenting allows me to do that like you mm. can't box me in like one look one sound and stuff like that. And speaking of all those different sides of Steph, because um, there's a Steph did the papaya dreams. Mm -hmm. You know, that nice love rap songs, yeah. like, mm, I dig it. Yeah. And then there was Steph who did Nairobi. Mm. Which is like poetry. You know, yeah. an ode to Nairobi, yeah. and I was like, mm, I'm feeling this. You are deep into the experimentation. Do you have like a favorite? Have you found a sweet spot maybe? I wouldn't say I found a sweet spot, but I think in like my flow and my cadence, you could always for sure hear the grime influence. Mm -hmm. It cuts across everything. In everything else that I do that is more like soft and like um, just vibey music, you hear a lot of like my island influences, so Caribbean music, dancehall will always be like, the foundation for that, right. um, Afro swing as well. So there's like a bit of like Afro beats. Um, you match it with like the UK rap mm -hmm. R&B vibe. Yeah. See like, what I was saying? Garden salad flavors <laughs> all it. over. Toss <laughs> it all up in there. When you drop the Mazishi freestyle, yeah. I was like, is she trying to say something? Are you trying to tell all these cats that hey, 
I can spit in Kiswahili yeah. Yeah. in case you did not know. Mazishi mazishi leo mtajua hudi matishiki si cheki na nini watoto ni wote mnyonye matiti Was that the motivation? You've hit it you've hit the nail on the head. So I felt like a lot of people in Nairobi anyone who would encounter my music would be like oh yeah this British rapper this yeah. Jamaican girl and I had to be like wait whoa 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 I can do this in Swahili, okay? Yeah. And like I I like to like respect the sound I'm going into. I'm not I don't I think there's a fine line between being like a culture vulture and actually taking time to understand where a sound is from and then educating yourself and and finding like what you can pick that's unique to where you're from and adding on to that. And you did it so well. Thank like you. the bars were mm, <laughs> absolutely on point. How do you fare when it comes to um collaboration? I love collaborating. There's always so much to learn from other people and their processes. I'm very to myself when I write. Even with producers, I'd be like, "Send me the beat. I'll work on it. I'll send you my feedback, and then you do your thing on that end." Being exposed and meeting a lot of Nairobi creatives has shown me like that's not really the way, like entirely the way to go about like networking with people here. Mm -hmm. And something beautiful can come out of you just walking into a studio with someone and you both make something from scratch so i'm opening myself up to more of that type of collaboration but i think even in like my debut project my ep you could see that there's a lot of features on there yeah. different producers from different parts of the world and speaking of things that you do in like you just dropped on demand yes and <laughs> here is the thing about on demand like we we know Steph the cheeky rapper. Mm -hmm. We know Steph the girl who can go hard yeah. with the bars yeah. in Kiswahili yeah. by the way. <laughs> like she can get poetic as well. Yeah. You can be poetic. But then when it came to on demand there is this this shall I say very sultry. Ah. Very sexy. I like the use of that mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. Sultry. This yeah. this very oh, va va voom mm -hmm. side of Steph and I was like god ah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay so yeah. and it's even in your voice yeah. like I, it's really incredible how you can how you use your voice in different songs yeah. like for for a song that's about love you know you have you have a very soft side to it and this one which is even bordering on lust i would say yeah. Yo, like it's <laughs> eargasms. You know what I mean? Thank you. Right? Oh, like what was well, what brought you to make that song? Um I think I think it goes my brand everyone says my brand is unruly. Mm. I've never I've always been cheeky. I always used to get in trouble in school, at home and stuff like that. Oh. So I felt like it was time to, you know, go back and tap into that. But something that actually a lot of my new fans don't know is that when I started out rapping, I used to do like freestyles on Facebook and I do them wow. like fluently in patois. So this was just like for my old fans it's like Oh we're going back like to the Jamaican sound mm -hmm. but for the new fans it's like whoa what's happening so I I I like the reactions that I've gotten from it um but yeah I just wanted a song that makes you feel good sensual you know like liberated yeah oh it makes us feel a lot of things <laughs> including sensual and liberated yes that that too but uh yo yeah, big ups on that like everything in that project I think it just came out so well and I mean I wonder whether this Do you take this as a compliment when people say, you know, the stuff like you mentioned like, oh, that that must be an artist from overseas yeah. from wherever. Do you take that like that's what's up? I mean, for me, or does it even matter? Yeah. I don't think it matters. It doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't matter because I think there's great creatives no matter what part of the world you're from. Um so for me in that sense it's not like there's a mark of quality when people think I'm British versus when they think I'm from Nairobi that doesn't matter to me but in terms of having a universal sound which is something I've always wanted to have like speak out in the music I feel like that's a compliment um the minute you play a song and you're like wait she's from here mm -hmm. no actually it's there then uh, maybe the next song you think I'm West African who knows yeah. you know so yeah for me it's just about like um being able to make something that will transcend like spaces so it can play here it should be able to play in Tokyo and like yeah, yeah. world view world view world boss uh, oh <laughs> world boss don't think that she's from britain she says it doesn't matter or it doesn't matter <laughs> but i love i love the idea that what you're trying to do is create like a a, a a global brand yes. you know more than just more than just a kenyan brand you are from kenya yes. but you're trying to aim for the world yes exactly ah more power to you that's what's up yes. that's how you do it thank you that's what's good <laughs> 
one thing I appreciate about all the emerging Kenyan talents is the fact that they are humble enough to acknowledge their roots, yet bold enough to eye the world stage. Shoutouts to Daudi for coming through for Metamorphosize, as well as Steph for bringing her grace, her poise, and her bars. Catch you on next week's episode of What's Good Africa Kenya Edition 3. We definitely have a whole lot more for you to see. <laughs>